Um, I'm going to talk to you about uh, Google and what I've learned from AvPals. And I'd like to start by saying, what is Google? Who is Google? What can Google do for you? Um, just as a tiny bit of background, Google was set up by two young men as a search engine. And that maybe is all that you have ever used it for, but it is much, much more than just a search engine and can be used for so many different things. The list is endless, not quite, but every time I look, there is something new to be seen. And what I must say about Google search engine, I know she is a lady and she is so helpful and always finds me something to do with the topic that I am researching. As we go along, I'll go through a list and then I will um, go into the body of the talk. First, there's Gmail, uh, a free email address. Uh, you can have five email addresses if you want them. You can then get a Google account. It's free and it gives you access to the most amazing list of technical software. There's Google Docs, free software that mimics Word document preparation. Google Sheets, free software that mimics Excel spreadsheets. Google Photos, a photo storage and management system. Google Classroom, a teaching aid for all sorts of learning situations. Google Maps, find out where you are, where you would like to go. Google Earth, includes pictures of the next house you might want to buy and maybe a picture of you outside your own house if you're lucky or unlucky as the case may be. Google Arts and Culture, take a tour of a museum. Google Drive, a backup cloud facility that gives you 15 gigs of free storage. Google Translate, Calendar, Meet, Slides. Google Duo, a video and voice calling system. Google Meet, a video meeting system, very much like Zoom that you're using today. Google Books, search for books to purchase. Google Play, see movies and TV. Google Devices, if you've been watching the, the programs put up by AvPals, you'll have seen Saskia mention these in her talks in ways to make you smarter. Google Tilt Brush, a 3D painting program. Google Wallop, an app for paying bills. In this short presentation, I will set out a few things that Google provides. I've used most of the ones that I speak about, but I've not used them all. Life is too short for spending all your time doing this. So as a search engine, when I first heard of AvPals, I enrolled as a face-to-face -face student because there were a number of computing things that I just could not manage. My trainers were particularly helpful, and if I posed a question they could not answer, which was rare, they would always say to me, have you Googled that? Some of my questions to the trainers, um, or anybody who would listen, Started with, I don't know how to work on my iPad and perform cal calculations, save to the cloud, find my great grandfather's birthplace, repair a sewing machine. It worked brilliantly, I must say, and saved hundreds of dollars. Change a tap washer, make Hungarian goulash, make a roller blind, looks better than the old one. I also have more esoteric wants and desires, such as, I want to downsize. I want to get rid of the clutter in my house. Enjoy the things that make me feel good. Organize my affairs. You will have listened to Sue Martin's talk about your digital affairs and what you should do with them. Maybe write a book. Um, or find out if the man I have been conversing with via email is real or a fake and just using someone else's photograph. 
the possible answers could be, should I enroll in next term's class on the same topic? Send a pleading letter to the presenter or to a friend? Ask my grandchildren. Well, I don't have any, so that doesn't work. Decide that I didn't really want to do that anyway, or just sulk. But the answer, of course, is you ask Mrs. Google anything and you will get an answer. You may not understand the answer or it may not be what you're looking for, but you will get an answer. You may need to refine your search and for help with this, you just ask Google for tips and tricks in conducting research. While Hungarian goulash photographs and downsizing might seem an odd mix, you can check with Google for a recipe. You no longer need bookcases full of recipe books. You can use a photo scanner to digitize your photos. Avpals runs a course and has a machine. And once you've digitized your photos, you use Google Photos to organize your photographs into albums. You can discard your physical photograph albums and drawers full of old photos. I know I've got lots. You can investigate your forebears and then throw out all the unnecessary paper research paraphernalia. You can satisfy your COVID-19 urge to do different things and to change your outlook on life. You can ask Google and she will give you YouTube presentations on repairs and craft jobs. You can save money by not having to employ people to do those jobs, or at least it will tell you what needs to be done when you do employ someone. Back to, whether, back to checking whether your new found, new found friend is real. This is a very useful and timely function given the rise of online dating and friendships for all ages. And it is an important one for those who are using online communication with people they have not met. It will often alert you to problems before they become disasters. To do this, open images.google.com. Follow the prompts to insert an image or a web address or URL. Google will identify the image if they can, or if it can, or if she can. Um, it may not be the name you have been given for the photograph that you can see on your screen. But hopefully, um, Google will not be able to identify the image, and that obviously is the preferred outcome. Somebody hasn't stolen somebody else's photograph. Google and Gmail. You can get five free email addresses. Uh, why would you want more than one email address? Well, maybe you don't, but I use a few. I set one of them up with my real information and the others with fake information, particularly date of birth and full name. Remember, if you do this, to keep a record of the details that you use for that second or third email address. Whenever I'm asked for an e email address on a website I'm searching, or when I go shopping or enter contests and they want an email address, and I know it is just to send me advertising, etc., I use one of the fake ones. And I don't use the, the one that I use for um, real correspondence. Once you have a Gmail account, a Gmail account, you have a Google account. And then you have access to lots of this software that we're talking about. Probably the most well known are the docs, sheets and slides. These are Google's free answers to Microsoft Office and are easy to use and probably enough for most applications of a personal nature. I'm using docs to prepare the notes for this presentation. I am typing the words, but I could be dictating them. If you are using a laptop, go to Docs, open a new document, press 
control plus shift plus S and a microphone symbol will appear and you are able to dictate the contents of your document. If you are using a later model tablet, open the docs document and find the microphone symbol. Turn it on and start dictating. Saves typing. Av Avpals uses sheets to keep track of all of the classes, attendees and payments. We share the sheets between the relevant people. We wash them occasionally. And each person on the sharing list can alter or add to the content on that sheet. I've also used sheets to prepare a loading pattern for a dragon boat. The formulations allow me to weight the boat and to balance the participants. Slides is a system of preparing a presentation similar to the PowerPoint software from Microsoft that I'm using to prepare this uh, today's talk. Google Maps and Earth, along with the search engine, these are probably the most well-known of the Google offerings. You will know that you can find almost any place on Earth even McMurdo Station in Antarctica. You can calculate a distance between two places by car, public transport, walking or bicycling, or you can ask Google for a distance as the crow flies. You can get directions in the same way that you can use a GPS to find your way. You can see a street view of the property to save going on a site inspection. You can see that I have used this function to see a view of the Maria Regina Church in Avalon, where Avpals holds the one-on-one -on -one sessions when there is no virus floating around. Google Photos syncs your photos from your smartphone, your tablet, and you can see them on your laptop or vice versa. You can organize them into albums, search for faces, and edit them. This program replaced Picasa. Um, you may already have a favorite method of organizing your photos, editing or changing the presentation of a view, searching for faces in your collection or searching for particular scenes. And indeed, many of the trainers at AlvPals have different preferences for photograph software. But Google is available to do these tasks and can be explored, or you may wish to ask Google to show you other me methods of organizing your photos. She will tell you, even though you might be being disloyal. Google Arts and Culture. I've now seen the inside of the public rooms of number 10 Downing Street, London. And I have had the intricate details of Vermeer's Girl with a Pearl Earring explained to me. I've never quite looked it out the same again. I can also look up a map of Paris and see the location of all of the museums and art galleries. I thought I had seen some of them, but I now know that even if I lived there for the rest of my life, I would not, never get through them all. There are so many things to do and see in this function, and there is probably something to amuse everyone. Google Drive, this is a cloud storage facility that allows 15 gig of free storage. There are many different cloud storage facilities on offer and you need to find the best one that suits your situation. Your AvPulse trainer can help with this if you need guidance, but whatever you do, it is a good idea to back up your work in case of equipment failure or nasty intrusions by viruses or software. Google Translate. When I go to Paris to live and see all those museums that I didn't know were there, I won't have to rely on my school or French and I don't need to learn a new language. Although if you were watching uh, SBS last night, you will find that the best way to keep your mind active and your IQ score high, it's to do just that, learn a new language. Anyway, if you don't choose to do that, Google Translate will assist. It is not only useful when you're overseas, but it can, can be useful when you visit ethnic enclaves in Sydney or other parts of Australia, and you want to understand what is on offer in shops and restaurants. 
Again, there are many translation services and Google is just one of them, but it is a wonderful tool. Now that I've told you some of the things that can, Google can help you with, where do you find them? You have your Google account and you open it up and you will find nine little dots on the top right hand corner. If you click, click on those dots, you'll get a drop down menu of the Google offerings. This is only the first part of that drop down menu. Be sure to scroll down the list. What I'm showing you here is just a fraction of the page. Um, find what you want and away you go. The list goes on. For another easy way to find the extent of the offering, you can type into your search engine, browse all Google products and services, and you will see that I've only touched on a very few. I wish you happy and useful computing, and remember that if you have any questions, AvPals will return sometime in the future, pandemic willing. Thanks for your time. Now, Annette, can you just uh, cl close your shared screen and I'm going to unmute everyone. There we go. I can do that. There we go. Should all be unmuted. I'll unmute you. Un you unmute yourself. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. I unmuted. Yeah. Yep, I'm unmuted. Hang on a second. I'm just going to un. There's a few people that are still muted. Uh, Helen, you're still muted. I'll try and unmute you. I, I am. I'm okay. I'm in. And Are you, you can hear okay? Okay. Yes. And John, you're muted. John Dixon, I'll unmute you. And John Posniak, if you can unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. And Rick Walter. <laughs> Mary, can you unmute? Got it. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Lynn Taylor, can you unmute yourself? Let me try and do it for you. No. Linda, you need to unmute. We just got Lynn and Linda who are un unmuted. No, need to be unmuted. Ron, I'll unmute you. I'll try and unmute you. And John Posnack. I've, I've tried to unmute you all. You might have to do it with your own controls. Okay, I'm finally unmuted. Robin, you're, you're not uh, unmuted. Let me see if I can unmute you. Lynn. Thank you. Okay. Just one more, Linda, you've got to um, unmute yourself. Just the controls down the bottom. I'll see if I can do it. No, I can't. Okay, Linda, keep trying. All right. Now, that was a wonderful presentation, Annette, and uh, I'm sure we've got some questions for Annette. Um, as I say, if you put your hand up, I'll try and pick you in order. So who would like to ask the first question? I think Mary had her hand up. Mary Musgrave, please. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Annette. That was really great. And I learned quite a few extra things that I didn't know. One of the things that you mentioned was that you can dictate into the docs and you yes. said the command was control shift and... S, S for yes. Sally. Okay, thank you so much. It was great. No problem. <laughs> thank you. Good. Next, John Dixon. Thank you, Annette. Um, Annette, comparing Google Gmail with Facebook, do you have any preference for either one of them? And um, how do you? I, I'm sorry, John. I, I heard comparing um, Gmail with Outlook. Outlook. Okay. I don't actually use Outlook, so I really can't answer that. I'm sorry. Um, no. I already have six email addresses and <laughs> yeah i um I'm, I'm flat out keeping track of what i've got so um i i, I don't use outlook thank you I, i've been told that um 
uh, several of the um, trainers at our palace prefer Gmail to Outlook, and I was just curious to know what the reasons were. John, I'd like to add something there. I okay. find that Gmail is much better if you're trying to send photographs. You can send a lot more photographs with Gmail than you can with Outlook. Outlook um, doesn't like you sending more than one or two. Thank you. Any more questions? Um, Sue. Actually, it's, it's more a comment. Thank you, Annette. I've got a, an email address which I is miscellaneous to 107. And I use that for the sort of newspapers, you know, newsletters and things like that that you've got. Yes, yes. Any more questions? Uh, yes. Um, and could you repeat about dictation, please? I'd like to write it down. Um, it depends on, on the equipment that you're using. Um, certainly with my older laptop, I mean, it's, it's reasonably powerful, but it's not today's model. Um, if you hit control, what did I say? Control <laughs> shift S. Control plus shift plus S. Yes. You'll see a microphone um, uh, logo come up, and then if you and and if when that comes up, it will accept your dictation into Docs. If you're using a tablet, a particularly a later model one, um, I know that I I have an old um, Samsung one. And it is not able to do the dictation into Docs. But my newer iPad, um, when you go into Docs, you will find a little micro microphone symbol at the bottom. You just hit on it and start dictating. It's, uh, it's just brilliant. I'll have a look because my device isn't new. It's not very new, but thank you so much. No problem. Um, uh, Anna, yeah. you can just type that up then. When Sorry, you, I, when you dictate, does it type it up then for you? Yes, yes. You talk to your machine, and you will see the typing come up as as the thing. Um, obviously, it needs to get used to your voice and and your accent, um, and you may need to go in and do little um, fix ups along the way. But um, as it becomes more used to what you're saying, it becomes more and more accurate. But John Dixon. Annette, is, is that something that you could demonstrate now with a shared screen? <laughs> uh, John, I didn't practice that. <laughs> John, I think that's a good idea. We'll, we'll discuss that and maybe do a, a Zoom presentation on, on dictation. Sue Martin. Annette, does, can you then get it to read what you've written back to you? Does it do, does Google do that or not? I can't, uh, I can't say that I tried that. Right. I was just so fascinated by being able to dictate that, um, that I, um, you know, but once of course you've dictated it, you can then email it to people as well. So, you know, you, um, if you've got problems with your fingers or arthritis or, or like my partner just refused to type, um, it's a, um, it's a brilliant system. Yeah. What about tilt brush? You, is that something? What is that with photos, or is it a, a drawing program? What is tilt brush? It's a separate um, paint stroke drawing program. I only found it um, this morning when I was going through to make sure that I had a, a reasonably full list, and uh, I had a very brief look at it. But um, it, it's quite extraordinary what you can do, and it's all in three D. So it's not a, just a straight, you know, line drawing. It's 3D everything. It, 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 amazing. Thank Before you. we have any more um, questions. Oh, me, me. Oh, me. Uh, Mary. One more. Yes, Mary Musgrave. Yes, thank you. Just on the family, family tree that you mentioned, is there a specific site that you go to for the family tree um, or are there many that come up? Um, if you ask Google, of course, there are many that come up. Yes. Um, but where I, what I meant there was that once you've asked Google for it, you can choose and then um, there are different ones for putting your information into. Okay. And also, I don't know whether it's still available, but I attended um, the genealogy talk yes. that we yes. had a couple of weeks yes. ago. 
and the library still had ancestry for yes. free yeah. and um and so if you go into that as well um you can uh work all that out i'm sorry i didn't know that well before no, that's okay. um no, that's because now that they've opened up libraries they might have turned it off but um there's all sorts of programs that you can use just ask google just yes. ask google <laughs> mary Thank go you. to avpals.com and look at lee haynes's lecture on genealogy yes. that yes. was on yes. about uh, two weeks ago and you'll find a lot in that Helen, yes, Annette, um, I find when I go into Google, you know, uh, obviously they say go into the first thing that you've asked about, you know, you might have asked a question about where will I find, say, outdoor furniture or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm wondering at, at the precedence and how they rate them all the way down. You know, mm -hmm. you seem to get the first one and then it, one that you really would like, you find right down near the bottom. You wonder how they rate those that's probably because the one down the bottom didn't pay as much oh. or isn't isn't putting up ads on google but it also could well be the way you have worded your question and that's why i put in the notes that if you are finding your answers aren't quite what you want there's a, a thing that says google tips and tricks and if you go into that, it's, there's a whole section on how you can make your search better. Um, you know, putting in uh, inverted commas and leaving some things out and doing other things. And it will much refine the, the choices that you're given. But yes, um, a lot of times they're in order of um, how much money is paid for an ad or, you know, all of those sorts of things change the order in which they come up. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Are there any more questions? Because um, I would like to introduce oh, Peter. Peter, I want you to talk anyway about what you're talking about next week, but did you have a question? No, I had an answer. Well, I think I have an answer. 